So who should be taking advantage of this refund suit? Who should be suing the government in order to get the refunds that they feel they're entitled to? What's, what's their next step? What do they figure out? Sure. My name is Rebecca Shepard. I'm a tax controversy attorney here at Frost Law. I'm here with my partner, Peter Huckabow. And together, we've both been practicing about a dozen years in tax controversy. A tax controversy attorney is someone who helps small businesses and individuals with a multitude of tax problems. So whether it's a payroll tax audit, domicile issue, worker classification, sales tax audit, all kinds of different problems that a taxpayer can face with the IRS or a state taxing authority. When COVID hit, Peter and I knew that we were going to help to help our clients a little bit more than other types of attorneys because our clients were kind of on this bubble of viability. And so we worked through different programs through PPP, FFCRA, EIDL, and then finally kind of worked through the employee retention credit um, to help our clients to make sure that if they were eligible to get every dollar they possibly could to keep them in operations. So we started working clearly just in defense in the controversy and then during this COVID period of time switched more to offense, working to make sure that we were getting our clients properly planned and make sure that they had proper tax planning. Um, work through any credit they could possibly get, what loans that they needed, looked through structural changes in order to make sure the organization was as efficient as possible. And now we find ourselves back in a defensive posture. So now where we are with the employee retention credit is we're kind of at this standstill with the government. The government is not processing returns. How many have they not processed at this point? Speculating, but it's probably around a million and a half. A million and a half returns have not been processed. So what do small businesses do when they are expecting tax refunds and they're not able to get them? So I know you have a recent example. What's happened with you? Sure. So and I guess just to put this conversation into context and where I think it's probably going, let's just first acknowledge that you know the commissioner is not wrong to raise a red flag here and to talk about fraud and to talk about you know a lot of people taking advantage of the employer retention credit. Um, there was a recent criminal complaint that was filed where three gentlemen tried to, you know, claim two point nine billion dollars, and I think they were even paid about, you know, one point one million. So, um, to put this conversation into context, he's not wrong. Um, that said, there are a lot of businesses that rightfully claim the employee retention credit, um, you know, to include the the very black and white, you know, grocery gross receipts decline. Um, method of eligibility that are really hurting, um, you know, for these funds. They, you know, these business owners have invested their own treasure into their businesses with the idea that they were going to receive these refunds and, and they haven't. And, you know, we, we have um, a client recently who, you know, unfortunately was, was forced to, into bankruptcy. Um, but, you know, as part of uh, that case, they have uh, a substantial employee retention credit claim that frankly would fund uh, the bankruptcy. And so, you know, this new phase of ERC is going to the government uh, through refund claim jurisdiction um, and, and litigation and saying, you know, government, this is a situation where Congress passed four pieces of legislation and created this, uh, you know, refundable tax credit and you need to um, comply with the law and, and make these payments. I can't believe that somebody was forced to go into bankruptcy because they weren't able to get the credits they deserved. How long had it been since they filed? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, certainly more than 12 months uh, have been, you know, sort of hanging out here. And the way that refund claim jurisdiction works is that after a period of inactivity or, you know, non-processing of a return of at least six months, um, you know, taxpayers are... You know, granted that that ability to file suit against the government to say, hey, it's time to, to process this return. Go find it. Go process it. I'm entitled to it. So who should be taking advantage of this refund suit? Who should be suing the government in order to get the refunds that they feel they're entitled to? What's what's their next step? What do they figure out? Sure. So, I mean, eligibility to to 
make these refund claims in, in this litigation is really based on timing. But I think that you know, prudent taxpayers want to slow down and make sure that the you know, analysis that they received, the advice they got from you know, a consultant, um, someone who's, who's not you know, necessarily a, a preparer or a tax professional, um, you, know, you want to make sure the analysis is strong and make sure that before you go and you know, begin federal district court or court of federal claims um, refund jurisdiction, you want to make sure that, that the analysis is correct, the computations are correct, and that you really understand what you have done by taking this position on tax returns. Because um, you're going to have to develop the facts in this litigation. You're going to have to demonstrate why uh, these refund claims need to be paid. Absolutely. And so what we've done in our practice is we have actually been tasked with looking at cases for second opinions. We've been called from people who've filed, I don't want to use the word mills, but have filed with marketing companies or have used other um, tax preparers to help them with their claims. And they're concerned and they want to come to tax attorneys and CPAs and to licensed professionals to make a determination on whether or not their claim is, act, is valid, whether or not they should withdraw their claim. You know, during the voluntary disclosure positions, whether or not they're, the voluntary disclosure program, whether or not they should voluntarily disclose their claim. So that's part of what we do is we look at and make a determination of whether or not we think that a claim is valid. The second step would be then you'd get your claim evaluated to determine what your next steps are in order to accelerate that refund. There might be some administrative avenues that we could take, and if not, then you know, last case or worst case scenario would be one of these refund suits. After we make a determination of whether or not we think a claim is viable, we would then look to see whether or not that case makes sense to, to go forward with a refund suit, or it might be there is an administrative way to accelerate that refund. But we're happy to do those free of charge. We do a consultation to make a determination of whether or not you should get a second opinion, whether or not it makes sense to go forward with a refund suit, and kind of just discuss these next steps that we're talking about here. So feel free to give us a call, at Rebecca and Peter at Frost Law, and we will discuss your employee retention credit claim. Thank you.